I welcome you all to Department of Physics, SDU Mahesh PU College, Belagavi. In this video, I will try to demonstrate an experiment of finding the internal resistance of a cell or battery. It is a given dry cell. We need to find out the internal resistance of this cell given. Okay, now I will try to explain the circuit diagram to be used to demonstrate this experiment here. way keys here like this and two meter you can clearly see that this is the point p this is the point p of the uh, uh, potentiometer and this is point q of the potentiometer so that's the reason why the length here to here it is 100 centimeter again here to here it is 100 centimeter and here to here you can see one more 100 centimeter and here to here again it is 100 centimeter so totally the total length of this potentiometer wire is 400 centimeter so now here we are using one resistance box here it is the resistance box and this is the rheostat we're using and uh, we are using you can clearly see the galvanometer as well as the jockey okay now we shall go ahead to uh, make the circuit setup now i will start from the battery batteries positive terminal to the what the point p this is the point p i have taken this is the point p if you look at the circuit diagram if you look at the circuit diagram At point P, there are three different connections. One is from the battery eliminator positive terminal and one more is from positive terminal of the given dry cell and one more to the what? Resistance box. One terminal of the resistance box I have to use here. Okay, I will just use this one terminal of the resistance box. And I have to connect it to the positive terminal of the battery as well as the positive terminal. Here you can clearly see that this is positive terminal. This is the positive terminal. So I will use that positive terminal of the dry cell. It's a junction now. I have to connect to the point P of the potentiometer. I'm using this as the point P of the potentiometer. Now it is connected. Okay. Now, the negative terminal from the battery eliminator should be connected to one end of the key one. I am using this as a key one here. I have to connect it to one end of the one terminal of the key one. Okay, now it is connected. And the another terminal should be connected to the lower terminal of the rheostat now it is connected so and uh, the upper terminal you can clearly see the upper terminal here the upper terminal of the rheostat should be connected to uh, so let me use you can clearly see that upper terminal should be connected to the point q point q is here this is the point Q. So this point Q should be connected to the upper terminal of the rheostat. This is the upper terminal. Okay, fine. Now you can vary the resistance by using the rheostat here. Now it is connected. And here the battery's negative terminal, this is what given dry cells negative terminal should be connected to K2. This is what K2 as well as this resistance box is one other terminal which is left no so this should be connected to the galvanometer galvanometer and this battery <coughs> now just connected to key to here once key to and another terminal from the key to 
again here is a formation of junction as well as the negative terminal of the cell dry cell should be connected to the positive terminal of the galvanometer okay now it is not connected let me connect it properly okay now it's connected now now we shall go ahead to take the readings now if you look at the tabular column here you can clearly see the tabular column we have to take the three trials resistance usually we take it as 1 ohm 2 ohm and 3 ohm like this from this resistance box known resistance box okay and in this column we have to write the length l2 then how to take l1 so to take the l1 this key 1 should be closed and key 2 should be open okay this is the what first reading you need to take let us find the value for l1 first okay so let's try to find out the value for l1 we shall take the readings now now i'll switch on this now i have to close key 1 i have to close key 1 here i have closed key 1 now you have to locate the what the opposite deflection you can clearly see the what deflection in the same direction but you have to get the deflection in the opposite direction that can be done by varying the rheostat like this okay now you can see now you can see that the deflection is one side and the deflection is also on the opposite side you can clearly have a look on this now we are ready to take the what reading l1 now you have to slide over this first line from p to q p to till here and later you have to slide over like this and again here to here and again here to here okay so this is how you need to take the readings i will start from point p now i will start to move like this to get the value for l1 to get the value for l1 until it should show the what zero deflection the galvanometer show zero deflection okay you can clearly have a look on this there may be some loose connections let me check it here so here is a loose connection okay we shall see now okay here it is not showing zero here also not showing zero i will come to the second line not zero now it is not zero not zero yes somewhere here the possibilities are there i will just go like this again it is removed here I'll go to the third line now. Yes, now you can clearly see it. between those two points we must get some zero readings now you can clearly see ah, now you can clearly see the what deflection which is approximately equal to zero which is approximately equal to zero somewhere here now you can clearly see 
it is somewhere here like this. Now you can clearly see the what zero reading. So this is approximately at 100 and it should be around wait again it is moving somewhere. Okay. Now it is approximately 112. So you have to write the balancing length L1 as 112 first. Okay, then what you need to do is we need to insert the key to we need to insert the key to like this. Okay, so just change it here. Just the insert key to and from the resistance box you take one ohm and again start from the beginning where the galvanometer shows a zero deflection you have to make a note of the balancing length l2 for three different resistance values 1 ohm 2 ohm and 3 ohm okay so similarly you have to do like this starting from this point p you have to take the what you have to observe the zero deflection it is not at all showing the zero deflection here second line second line it is not at all showing zero now you can clearly see the what the galvanometer is approaching zero correct so now it's approaching zero here yeah now it's clear so now this should be approximately at 167 its value is 167 we need to make a note of this one 167 so while taking the readings when you move from lhs to rhs left hand to from point p to this end use the upper scale here from 1 to 100 later you have to use a scale so that's the reason why here instead of this is 112 it was 188 here it was 188 here okay 188 because you have to use this scale okay 188 and here it is 167 similarly you have to remove the 2 ohm resistance and it's closed one now this register box acts like a 2 ohm resistor both the keys are closed now you can go ahead to take the readings and do the same process where the galvanometer shows a deflection write the balancing length l2 similarly do the same for 3 ohm resistor now you can definitely calculate the value for resistance r by using the formula r r equal to internal resistance of the cell is equal to r value whatever the value you're using here for 1 ohm 2 ohm 3 ohm here r into l1 minus l2 divided by l2 you need to use because l1 is always greater than l2 okay whatever the the balancing length you are getting when the key 1 is closed and key 2 is open that balancing length should be always greater than the what l2 reading so you will get the three reading three values for resistance internal resistance of a cell that is the range so range of the internal resistance internal resistance that is what you need to take here okay this completes this experiment thank you